at some point, I'm going to lead you through prayer. But before we get there, before we get to the prayer where you're going to pray and believe that you receive, <clears throat> then I'm going to lay hands. What we're going to do tonight, I'm going to be doing like four different biblical principles for healing. This is like system redundancy, right? Any one of these will work, but all three or four of them together, it's guaranteed. Amen? So we're just going to go over and do it over and over again. Now, so <clears throat> that's how we're going to do it. And I'm going to lead you to that in just a minute. But now I want to teach you and show you real quick, and I've already talked about this a little bit, of how to keep your healing once you've received it. Because this is, this is where most people end up either losing their healing, so to speak, which I don't use, like using that term because it technically they, you don't lose your healing. Technically, the enemy comes back and makes you sick again. Do you understand? See, you saying you lose your healing almost sounds like you did something wrong and God took it from you or for whatever reason. But whenever you realize that, okay, you got healed and the enemy saw that, but he saw that you were not prepared to keep that healing. So all he did was come back and make you sick again. Okay. Now, now listen carefully. Here's what we have to remember. <clears throat> Jesus called the devil, who is the author of sickness and disease. He called him a thief. Isn't that right? Okay. So here's one thing you need to remember. The devil, and I'm, that's, okay. This, this is biblical fact. Now it's going to probably have to change your terminology. Uh, but you'll see what I'm talking about. But it is biblical fact, okay? Because I know how we say it. Well, you know, I'm resisting uh, because the devil gave me this cancer. And I'm resisting it. I, I don't receive that report. You know, we, we go through all the stuff, right? But we believe that the devil gave us this sickness, this blood disease, this eye problem, this cancer. What we, we say the devil gave it to us. It, it, isn't that what everybody, generally what everybody says? Is that right? You've heard it said that way. Okay. But Jesus said that the devil is a thief. He didn't say he's a giver. Do you get that? Yeah. So the, the thief doesn't give. Jesus said, I came. Isn't that right? Yeah. To do what? To, to that they may have life. Isn't that right? So Jesus came to give. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Is that right? When it says he comes to, to steal, kill, and destroy, he didn't say, and also to give you something. So he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So what did the devil do? He didn't give you your sickness he stole your health. Do you, do you get that? Now, I, I know this you know, may seem minor, but this is huge. Because in, well, yeah, in uh, Isaiah 53, he actually says that, and it's talking about Jesus, of course, and it's the same scripture that says, by his stripes we are healed, right? And at the end, it said, well, let's, let's go there. I want you to see this. I know we were in Luke 18, but we're going to go back to Isaiah. We're going to go Isaiah. Isaiah 53. It's a short chapter. I'm not going to read it all. I'm going to skip to the bottom part. But if you look at about verse, we'll start at verse 10. Isaiah 53, 10. It says, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Why? Because he knew what it was going to bring, right? He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Verse 11. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, now watch, because he bore the iniquities. Therefore will I divide him. A portion with the great. So now God is talking about dividing a portion with the great to Jesus. So he's given this to Jesus. Now watch. And he, Jesus, shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he has poured out his soul unto death. So you get that? Now notice. So here he says, I'll divide him a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. So we know that Jesus went into the pit. Amen? And then it says that he spoiled the enemy openly. 
triumphing over him openly. Is that right? And then it says he led captivity captive and then he came back out. Isn't that right? When he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and came back. So whenever he went in, and notice he brings out, now whenever you go in, and even Jesus said this, he said, no one can spoil a strong man's goods unless he be stronger. Isn't that right? And you have to go in and bind the strong man and then you spoil his house. Is that right? So now notice Jesus is talking about him and the devil. And he said, I have to bind him. Then I have to go into his house and spoil his house, which means take everything out of his house and bring the spoils out. The spoils, we always call it the spoils of war, right? That means you go in, you defeat an enemy and you take all his stuff. And when you come back out, you see it in the Bible often and then history, especially like in the Romans and stuff, when they came out, they would have these long parades and they bring all the spoils from whatever country they had just beat, right? And they'd have all the gold and the jewels and, all, and that was the spoil. And so they brought the spoil out and the spoil was what they took from their enemy. Where here he says, I will divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil. So whatever Jesus took from the enemy, he's going to divide that with the strong. You got that? Now, do you remember what it says in Joel? Let the weak say. And when the weak says, I'm strong, then there is an, uh, something that happens that causes the weak to become strong. Well, what is it that makes that happen? Well, it's, he says that he will divide the spoil with the strong. So when the weak says, I am strong, he divides that spoil and that portion comes to you and you become strong. So if you were sick, weak, then you say, I'm strong, healed by his stripes, and he divides the spoil. Now notice what he came out of. He went in. See, the enemy stole. The devil's a thief. He stole your health. So he has your health piled up in hell. Jesus goes in, takes all the spoil, all your health, comes back out with it, and he's standing there. And he said, oh, healing? Oh, that's already been given. Yeah, I got it. I grant it. Now, who, who's, who's sick? Who's weak? Well, I'm strong. Yeah, and here you are. Here's your healing. Here's your strength. Here's your life. And he divides the spoil with the strong. Once you say you're strong, if you're weak, then you become strong. And he sends back that spoil. And that spoil is your health. And you become healed and whole. Amen? Now, now think about that. He divides that spoil with whoever says they're strong. And that spoil makes you strong. And now, when did he do that? 2,000 years ago. So he's been holding your health in his hands until you receive it. Amen? Because he's already granted it. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Isn't that health? Isn't that healing? Isn't that wholeness? He's already granted that. He has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. How many of you know health pertains to life? Yes. Amen? So he's already granted that. It is yours. But he's just waiting to say, well, what wilt thou? What do you intensely desire? Because all you have to do is let me know what you intensely desire. Tell me what it is you want, not what you got. I can tell you, Jesus doesn't care what you call that thing. He doesn't care if you, if you call it four-stage cancer. He doesn't care if you call it leukemia. He doesn't care if you call it HIV. He doesn't care what you call it. To him, he's, it's got one word, devil. That's all he cares. And what he knows is, he's already beat it. Amen? So all he wants to know is, what do you want? Not what you got. He doesn't need your medical records. Amen? He doesn't need the medical terminology and all the stuff. Hey, do you think that matters to him? It doesn't matter to him. Why? Because he knows he can, he can beat it. And when you know you can beat it, it doesn't matter what it is. And so none of that matters. So you can just receive because it's already been given. Now, 